So with the clay court season finally underway, we had some big results. Some massive tournaments as well during the week, especially on the WTA. A couple of changes to the main rankings, but mainly changes to the point situation for the race of the finals. Let's go over and see who won last week because we had some massive winners last week. Five tournaments last week, starting with the WTA and the Bogota Open with Maria beating Stearns in that WTA 250 event on clay. 6-3, 2-6, And both players getting a boost in the rankings. And at the Charleston Open, a big WTA 500 event. Anstra Burr taking out Benchich, 7 6 6 4 in a rematch of last year's final in Charleston. This time the result was reversed, but a lot of big names played that event, and we see some changing in the rankings because of that event in particular. Over on the ATP, we had three tournaments, all ATP 250s, starting with the Marrakesh Open, with Bayana taking up Muller, 4 6 7 6 6 2 in the final. Over in Portugal, we had the Estrel Open with Kasper Ruud getting his first title of the year, 6 2 7 6 against Kejmenovic. And over in Houston, Tiafo winning another title, beating Echeverry in two tiebreaks. 7676 to start off his clay court season with a bang. So, a lot of players getting their first titles for the season in the first week of that clay court season. Having a look at the players who have gone up in the rankings this week outside the top 10, Tiafo, he is number 11 in the world on the brink of the top 10 at a career high now, four spots higher than last week. The so big foe winning a title and knocking on the door of that top 10. Bayana also at a career high number 51 in the world, 31 spots higher than last week. And Stearns is at a career high 89 in the world, 27 spots higher than last week. So, the players that did well. Well, this week, getting a huge boost in the ranking. A lot of career high rankings for this week. Players that have dropped down in the rankings. John Isner, he's gone down 21 spots to number 67 in the world after failing to defend the points that he made last year. Molchan, the same, down 21 spots to number 72 in the world. And Anissa Mova, she's gone down 12 spots to number 47 in the world. So, some big drops for players that didn't defend the points from last year. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings this week. And not too many changes with Triontek staying at number one, Sabalenka at number two, and Pagula making a semi-final in Charleston. Stays at number three. We have a change in the middle with Ons Jabur, the Charleston champion, going up to number four, pushing Garcia down to number five, with Goff staying at number six. Rabakina at 7, Kazakina making the semi-finals of Charleston, stays at number 8 but adds a lot of points to her total. Zachary at 9 and Kvitova rounds out the top 10 for this week but we actually have no WTA events on this week so the rankings won't change. The only thing we have this week for the ladies is a Billie Jean King Cup where there are no points up for grabs. Having a look at the race of the finals now for the WTA and again not too many changes. With Sabalenka at number one and Rebecca at number two. Pagula stays at three, adds a few points to her title. Fiontek at four. But Bencic, she goes back up to number five, two spots higher than last week. After making the final in Charleston, pushing Kvitova down to number six and Krajikova down to number seven. So a good week from Bencic, puts her back in that top five. Goff stays at number eight. Azarenka staying at number nine and Lynette stays at number 10. And again, like I said, no points up for grabs this week on the WTA. So this list won't change for a couple of weeks. Going over to the ATP now and a few changes, but not at the top with Djokovic staying at number one. Alcaraz staying at number two with Sidney Pass at number three. But Kasper Ruud, he leapfrogs Medvedev back into the top four spot after winning that tournament in Portugal, pushing Medvedev down to number five. Rublev staying at number six with Felix Ogier Aliassime at number seven. And Yannick Sinner, despite not playing this week, he's gone to a career high number eight in the world. Leapfrogging Runa, who dropped points from this time last year. You can see there the points total very close between those two. Runa's at number nine now, and Fritz stays at number 10. And of course, Monte Carlo this week, a huge event on the ATP. And eight of those top 10 players are playing this week. So expect some big changes this time next week on the ATP. Having a look at the race of the finals now. And again, no changes with Medvedev staying at number one, Djokovic number two, Alcaraz staying at three, and Sinner at number four. Sidney Pass at five. Fritz stays at number six with Paul at number seven. Nori at eight. Hashinov at nine. And Francis Tiafo rounding out the top 10. But Tiafo with a big win in Houston. Houston adds a lot of points to his total, whereas no one else adds any points this week because they didn't play. So again, next week, Monte Carlo is going to be huge and expect some big changes in the race of the finals with our third Masters 1000 event of the year. So there it is. That is the rankings for this week. Nothing major to report on. I know over March, we had a couple of massive changes on the men's side with a top player in the world changing hands over and over. And it's a shame because Elkris isn't playing this week in Monte Carlo where Djokovic is. So that race to the number one spot or that battle for number one is not going to be on this week. We'll have to wait a few more weeks. But let me know down in the comments below. What's the biggest shock for you this week? Is it the fact that some players are finally getting their seasons off to a good start? Players like Rude and Jabur finally winning a title this year after a very slow start to the year. But the clay court season is finally underway. No tournaments on the WTA next week, but the ATP, massive in Monte Carlo.